Hey, I'm Bill and this is A Nose for Life. And today we're talking about negative thoughts that go around and around your head. Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to you. When scientists learned to split the atom, they found that it released something. All these studies that have come out, or I should say one study, and, and by study I just simply mean there was a uh, an internet post, not an actual, I don't know if it was an actual study or not, about why hiking is so beneficial. And that matters, like whether or not what you're trying to find out is true or not. I mean, when you see something on Facebook and it says something like, eating five quarts of honey and vinegar a day will help grow hair on your head. You don't need to listen to that unless you can find a link that can prove it. Trust me on that one. Seriously though, I wanted to find out where these people were getting their information. I'm sorry, but I can't take your word for any of those facts. Uh, about hiking and it being beneficial for ruminating, you know, when those negative thoughts hit your head and you just can't get them out of your head and all of this jazz. I wanted to figure out where they got the information because that, that's some great information, especially if you're like me and you're hiking, you like taking people hiking, or you organize hiking trips or whatever the case is because it's a great selling point, right? But I noticed that the more I Googled the information, the more the information just seemed to be duplicated from other blogs. In fact, as I went to get like the actual uh, scientific information, because as you know, as a subscriber, and if you're new to this channel, by the way, welcome to A Nose for Life, but I always put links in the description of where I get the information. Where am I getting this? You know, I want people to know that I'm not just making this stuff up most of the time as I go. And so I'll put links in the description. I wanted to link to whatever scientific study that they were talking about. Do you know that I went to like 41 different websites? 41 different websites and none of them linked to the actual scientific study. They linked to other blogs that mention the scientific study. So when you're out there and you're Googling information, and this is what the whole fake news thing should be about, but isn't, is because a lot of times somebody will come up with something and they're just basically taking you to MSU. They're just kind of making stuff up, if you know what I mean. And then all of a sudden it's so catchy that you'll have 15, 25, 35, 40 other bloggers just copying what they said, but it's bull, it's baloney, it's, it's nothing. But in this case, I did finally find the pros, and of course, I will link to that in the description. I'll show it to you here on the screen. It is an actual scientific study, you know, but it's like any study, it's one study. But still, I found on a personal level that there is some truth to the fact that yes, it is true that hiking does help with anxiety, depression, uh, any type of, I call it cyclic thinking, uh, ruminating, whatever you want to call that thing, you can't get those negative thoughts just circling around and around. And you know, they don't necessarily have to be negative thoughts. They could just be deep thoughts. That's what the word ruminate means. It means to, to think, you know, to think deeply. There was an official study. Of course, there are other things that relieve anxiety and depression as well, but they're not necessarily good for you. Mine, is food. Yeah, food can definitely help with anxiety and depression, and it can also contribute to anxiety and depression. And there's a lot of things that we go to when we are anxious and we are depressed that aren't necessarily good for us. And my big one is food. Why hiking out in the forest or out in nature is beneficial more so than just walking, let's say in an urban environment, uh, or you know closer to a city and it turns out there's some very interesting information about hiking and why it is becoming a great way to decrease stress and ruminating thinking what is ruminating thinking well here's the way I understand ruminating thinking is that when you think of something um, you, you, you get a, a bad thought in your head maybe about work or maybe about that mean boss that you can't stand but actually I love my boss so it's probably not a good example but maybe it's a, a workplace philosophy or or maybe it's your neighbor you don't like your neighbor I like my neighbor, so that doesn't count either. I, it just could be anything. Just negative thoughts that, that just continue and continue and continue. Well, you know that they're saying is that hiking is the best way to deal with rumination? Is that what it's called? I'll have to look into that one and maybe do a voiceover right here. <laughs> Thank you.
but it's when that bad thought happens again and again and again, and it just cycles through your brain. It just cycles through your brain over and over how to deal with that. And they're saying over and over now that hiking out in nature is one of the best ways to deal with that. Hiking does do something mentally that taking that jog and that normal workout doesn't do. I mean, you burn as many calories, if not more, depending on where you're hiking, you know, what type of environment you're hiking in. Um, with me, it's usually mountains because I live in southeastern Tennessee. Um, so for me, it's uh, hiking is, is one of those things that releases endorphins. You know, you're burning calories, which is always good. And you know, you, you, you get that, that, that high, you know, that, that uh, physical high and it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's great, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, I would say that it definitely helps with depression, probably more so than just working out or just weightlifting. I hate to say just working out or just weightlifting because that is so important too. And that also decreases stress and releases endorphins and good stuff. But I think hiking helps me a little more than it does than, than just working out. Uh, that's just me. I know I was going through a crisis here a few weeks ago and I mean, it was a big decision point. It was a big decision and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do on this decision. I really need to make up my mind here. And I was really frustrated and I took a few days just to go hiking and it was probably the best decision that I've made because I, it, it got rid of a lot of the negativity, a lot of the uh, you know frustration or anger or whatever you wanna call it. By the way, always consult your doctor before you do any type of exercise program. I would jump in to hiking before I jumped into anything. You know, at the beginning of the year, uh, you have all these people that they they will join, um, you know, memberships to to health spas and to, to weightlifting. And I always want to say, have you ever just tried walking? And you'd be surprised at how much that does for you. I know that it helps uh, my wife Carolyn. It helps me just to get out and walk and exercise and enjoy, you know, the environment. Enjoy being outside and gives you access to nature and all the beautiful things that that God's created. So yeah, hiking helps deal with. But if you are hiking in Middle Tennessee or down in Alabama or even Eastern Tennessee, you want to remember that big cats are back. And no, I'm not talking about the Kentucky Wildcats, not this time anyway, for all my Kentucky subscribers. And yes, I do have quite a few Kentucky subscribers. No, I'm talking about mountain lions or, or cougars. <laughs> no, cougars are back in the news. Cougars have expanded back up into Middle Tennessee and even here in on the Western Wall of Eastern Tennessee. In fact, there was even an awesome video that was released by SciShow, which is one of my favorite shows on YouTube, by the way, one of my favorite video platform people kind of guys, Hank Green, uh, his channel over at SciShow, they talk about uh, the the increase of, of cougars and there's a great video about it and um, they talk about, you know, the cats are back, so to speak, and they're spreading and it's kind of a cool, but anyway, it's a 30 minute video over on SciShow. I'm going to link down in the description below. Love Hank and John Green. They are just amazing inspiration YouTube people, uh, but there's an awesome video about that. So if you are going hiking to release stress, don't increase your stress by having to run into wild animals that you have to run from. Because when I saw the cougar in the woods, no, not Demi Moore, but when I saw a cougar in the woods, I, I, I didn't know what to do. It, it scared me. Luckily, it was running the other way and really wasn't that interested in me. So yeah, I've ran into a bear before while hiking. I ran into, a, you know, a cougar. Uh, I've ran into a lot of deer, coyotes, definitely coyotes, and squirrels lots and lots of squirrels and for some reason squirrels like to communicate with me i don't understand a word they're saying but they think that i do for whatever reason because they'll like stop on a tree and just like bark and and squeal and all kinds of craziness and i try to help them and talk to them but they just they don't listen and 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 they're not scared of me they will crawl right next to me it's crazy squirrels weird weird creatures mysterious so have you ever been cleaning something out like i don't know an old shop or uh, storage bin or storage facility and then all of a sudden a mouse like crawl over something and then you totally freak out that happened to me the, the other day i was like because ah! the mouse like practically crawled over my arm was cleaning out this fishing shack on this property that we have and it like totally crawled over my hands and it was like close to, okay it wasn't even close to my hands it was like 15 feet from my hand but it was the point that it was there and it was really gross i think i'm not really scared of running into cougars or 
mountain lions in the woods, but a mouse, I don't know why. It's just the whole scurrying can't really, yeah, it's just yuck. Mice and squirrels. I know that getting away uh, helps me, like get, not running away. There's a big difference between a getaway and a runaway. Sometimes we use getaways to run away from our problems and that's not what I'm talking about. But getting away with our, with our family, uh, getting away with our spouse, it, there is something amazing about that. First of all, you can reconnect with your spouse, your family member, your loved ones, help, you know, whoever you're traveling with, there's a reconnection there. And sometimes that reminds you of why you might be going through a stressful or anxious time to begin with is because you're, you know, you're in the grind. You're fighting for those things that you love. You're fighting for those things that, uh, for those commitments that you've made for your children uh, or for your family. And so it reminds you of those things and it's a positive thing to kind of get away and recharge and go, oh yeah, this is why I'm going through these hard times is because I made a commitment and that commitment may require some, some, some sweat, some blood, sweat, and tears. Um, I know that that's important. That's why I'm taking my wife out this weekend and I'm looking so forward to it and we're gonna do a little hiking this weekend as well. You know, at the end of the day, any type of exercise is probably are going to be beneficial if you suffer with anxiety and depression. And it seems like in today's society, I run into more people uh, that admit to struggling with anxiety and depression. And I don't know if that's because the, the definition of anxiety and depression has kind of become broad, or if we just live in, in a society right now that kind of creates more anxiety and more depression. I mean, like if you watch the news every day, which I've stopped watching the news every day, because I have found that the news can contribute to my anxiety and depression. So I don't watch much of the news. But if you are a news junkie, and I got to admit, a lot of times I am sort of a news junkie, because I gotta have my news fix, man. If you're one of those people, and yes, that was an ugly face, but if you are one of those people, you probably definitely, most definitely need to hike and clear your brain every once in a while or at least a few times a week. I'm noticing that the older I get, I probably need to hike more. Now, I'm a Christian, so I believe in prayer, and so I definitely believe that getting away uh, and praying also reduces anxiety levels and reduces depression big time in my life. And sometimes I combine my hiking time with my prayer time and I have found that to be a very, very good way to release anxiety and depression. And it helps me make big decisions. Again, I made a decision a few weeks ago. It was huge. It was huge. <laughs> but I made a decision a few weeks ago uh, that it could have been terrible if I had made if I had made a different decision. It could have been dra It could have been ter It could have been draconian. I love the word draconian. It happens to be one of the best words. Draconian. I mean, that means it's really bad, right? Draconian. Beautiful word. Anyway, had I made the wrong decision, it could have been draconian for my family and myself. But after going out hiking, praying, I made a better decision. It just works for me that way. Hey, in the comments below, if you find that exercise or hiking or work, whatever the case is, if it helps you, put it in the comments below. How do you relieve your anxiety, stress, and depression? Be honest, put it in the comments. I cannot wait to go on an adventure with my wife. Is going to be so fun and we're taking you with us stay tuned i should have a video out sunday or monday morning about our trip over to north carolina to Asheville. we're going to stop at the biltmore we're going to hit the blue ridge we're going to have a great time can't wait to go to Asheville and take you with us thank you so much for watching and if you're a subscriber thank you so much for being a part of our growing community and i'm glad you hit the like button today if you're new to a nose for life or if you're not a subscriber i want to personally invite you right now to subscribe and click that little bell beside the subscribe button for notifications. Be a part of our growing community. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. And check out some of these other amazing videos at the end of this video.